All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Abdurrahman Khamis. I'm a technical manager at DDN Storage. Uh, should was with, with me Simon from University of Birmingham and Maria, but they couldn't make it uh, to the event for other commitment. So, what to ex expect in the today today talk? So today we're gonna talk about uh, stuff on how to benchmark an uh, OpenStack storage. If you're gonna go today and buy a storage solution for OpenStack, we're gonna discuss a real use case that we actually benefited from. Uh, so we, we, we're gonna talk about stuff, how, how to avoid seeing like gigabyte per second, megabyte per second, and getting into technical uh, to stuff that doesn't mean anything for your OpenStack storage. Uh, we're gonna see a later demo on the approach that we talk. Uh, and see uh, what, what is the uh, lessons that we learned. So just to give you a, a bit of perspective in DDN storage, we actually come from the high performance side. So uh, we usually go in the high performance computing and we plug on our storage to a single application. So we benchmark all our storage to one application. So we just need to know how this application is, uh, is reading and writing and we customize the storage to that application. So the benchmark will look like something like this. So you see a lot of numbers, you run a typical uh, benchmark tools like IOZON, DD, that kind of stuff, and you say, yeah, I got it right this time. But the thing that going into cloud, you have a couple of applications. It's not, it's not one single application anymore. So we couldn't go and just tune the storage for one single application and walk away and say, yes, Mr. Customer, your storage will perform 10 gigabytes per second, 20 gigabytes per second, whatever that is. Because that number doesn't actually mean anything for your application or your customer application. Assume that if you end up today with a number like uh, saying it will perform like 10 million IOPS, that's different from my SQL database to an in-house application. Each application has a different meaning. So, in this approach, what we are trying to do today is how, we, how, how you can know that this is the best storage configuration that you get. How do you know if adding an SSD to your storage will benefit your customer workload? So this approach will help you to know each storage configuration you change, whether it will help your uh, customer application or not. So to give you a bit of background, we did this benchmark with the University of Birmingham. They have what they call the Bureau Cloud, which is like OpenStack cloud uh, for bioinformatics uh, uh, environment. So they have a couple of applications. Scientists are using this uh, 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 cloud to uh, accelerate their business. So we, we had a couple of stuff that we want to test. They had already running an OpenStack cloud connected to DDN storage, and uh, they were, they've been in, 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 in uh, a lot of OpenStack conferences. They've been hearing a lot of stuff that may help their environment. So they wanted to test a couple of stuff. So one of the things that they would like to test, what, what if we added SSD and, uh, uh, to our uh, storage? Whether that will help our application workload or not? So. Uh, whether we, if we turn on SFX, which is a caching technology that we have in DDN. Another question that I said, if we run the application on, uh, on the parallel file system, on IBM Spectrum scale, or we, if we run it in Cinder, is that best for our application or not? So uh, another question. Uh, another question they have, does it matter if we run the application in, in a 10 gigi interconnect or in, into InfiniBad inter, uh, interconnect? So they had a couple of questions on s s small changes that they can do in the cloud and they don't know, or actually we don't know how, how we can capture those changes. For example, using Incender, if you use extension 4 or XFS, how do you know if that application, if your application is going to benefit from that change or not? So uh, what we are going to do today is we're going to take one question of these and see how we tackle that question, and we got an answer. So one of the question that we're going to take is, if you uh, switch to uh, a, a Q uh, Co to uh, a glance image format, how that will affect your cloud? So we took that question and see, 
uh, and we say like let's see uh, let's see if this is going to affect our uh, application and uh, let's see if it's going to affect uh, the the VM deploy time. So just to give you a perspective before going into the demo, uh, this is we have the 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 the, uh, the storage, and then you have the fabric where your hypervisor is connected to that storage, and then you have a couple of virtual machines running inside those hypervisors, and then later on the application. We, they have, there, there is two applications the customer is interested about. One called BOA and the second is MicroBees, which is an application that bioinformaticians really care about. So uh, for them, the, they want the performance to, they, they want to tune their storage for those two applications. So let's say, uh, let's get into it. Like we ask the question that like, okay, we're gonna change a glance image format and we're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna answer two questions: Is the VM deployment time will uh, VM deployment time will will be affected? And the second one: How is the BUA or the microbees will see these changes? Right. All right. So here I'm 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 I'm, I'm logging to like. Uh, to the end result, like how we figured that, uh, how fi we figured this out. We're gonna see later what is the workflow and how we got this result. So just to give you a perspective here, this, uh, I'm, 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 I'm reviewing here Kibana, which is uh, uh, just viewing the benchmark results that we did. You see on the left hand side, there is like 50, 54 hits. And what it means is that we did 54 benchmarks, okay? So every hit you see here, it's a single benchmark that we did. In the left hand side, this is like a couple of the variables that we are interested in. Like in each file system, it could be different variables. Or in each application that you are concerned about, it could be different variables. Uh, 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 while you are uh, writing the application, you can dictate which variable you are interested about. Okay? So here what I'm going to do is, is search for like, I'll, I'm going to see a search for the VM deploy time. First, let me uh, show you each single result, how it does it look like. As I said, this is like a, a specific to our file system. This is, can be any file system, SAF, LVM. It doesn't need to be this, those variable. You dictate those variable. Uh, for example, every time we do the benchmark, we capture the file system configuration. So we would know what was the configuration when we did this benchmark in order to tune it later or, or, or to uh, design the storage based on that configuration, et cetera, et cetera. You can see like how many uh, number of uh, VMs we run the job on, et cetera, et cetera. So here I'm going to toggle. I, 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 I have a lot of results here. So I, I'm telling the system I only want to see the VM deploy times, right? So I'm filtering the values. So as you can see here, I have around nine heads for the VM deploy times. And I, I, the average time, like how much VMs actually took to boot, um, let me, let's, let's just sort that. And as you can see, the first result, like uh, the, the, the least one, it's the better. And when I look this up, I say, yes, I was using Cinder at that time. So the idea here is like, you get a, a result and then you go into each result and dig, what, what, what did I do, uh, I did different this time? So this is, will be the, 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 the mechanism. As you can see, there is not that much difference when it comes to, uh, this is a result for Q, uh, uh, code to a format versus row. Like they, they were like almost the same. So not that much difference uh, at the end of the day, like, uh, uh, it depends on you whether that's a lot of difference to you or not. So this is one thing. So moving to the second question, now we are seeing uh, how our application was affected by uh, changing the format. So here, this is our application names. Like uh, we are using a, a small data set. We called it test BOA small. So I'm filtering for the values here. And again, I, like, I can see a uh, like, really good result over here comparing to here. And when I look it up, again, I see Cinder. 
So even if your configuration is wrong, even if your configuration is right, the thing that you, you find what is suitable for your storage from your data. So like you are mining the data and capturing all your benchmark result in order to, to design the best uh, storage, in order to make the best decision whether to go with that vendor or that vendor, etc., etc. So like this, as you can see, we didn't want, we, we, we didn't go to the way we'll, we are like reviewing gigabyte per second and in a very technical terms that only a uh, storage administrator can understand. So in this result, like even business people can review and make the decision. You can go and you, to, user, to your user or you can go to your manager and say, well, if we, if we uh, uh, purchase this SSD of, or if, uh, if we go with DDN, we can get this time, as simple as that. And you can make decision based on that result. So going back to the presentation, just to get you like the, the, the workflow, that, uh, and how we got those results, what is that? Uh, it's all of them open source tools that we glued them together to get this result. So we started with the heat, just like a heat, which is the orchestration engine for uh, OpenStack. We kicked out the VMs, deployed them in the hypervisors. And then later on, some of the, a couple of Ansible playbooks that run our ac actual job. So the Ansible playbox. Uh, uh, run our actual job, which is the scientists really, really care about, like their, their uh, genomics workflow. It can be, uh, in your example, a MySQL. It can be any application. Uh, so the Ansible here just uh, to control the application layer. After that, once you get the result, you store it in a JSON format, and it, it is the format that is uh, the system, uh, the Elasticsearch understand it. The Elasticsearch component here it's the component that we use to ingest those results. So we are capturing the result from the VM deployment time, we are capturing the result from uh, the application run time, and we ingest them into uh, a NoSQL based uh, cluster that indexing our result. And then the last stage, which is what we did, is discover with Kibana. So the Kibana is just a front end a geographical, a geographical interface to view your index, index code, uh, document. You can query your, uh, your results in ABIs and in different tools. The important step I see here that you need to take action based on that result. So you're gonna like benchmark all day, you're gonna like uh, 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 plug this in, into your BOC and then view the result and later on make an action based on that result. Just a couple of things to consider, things that we did uh, while uh, uh, working on this, like understand the app metrics. If it's time, like if, if, in our case, when we uh, talked to the scientists and said, how, did we, how, how we can understand if your application will move faster? He said, they said, okay, like the, the less time, more is the faster for us. So you need to understand like the application like uh, metrics. Is it like by their number of transactions? Is it by time, et cetera, et cetera? Depending on your application, you will have a different matrix. So make sure you understand the metrics. Second, that include uh, uh, as much data as possible, meaning that like it, it's a data at the end of the day. So make sure you capture like the network status, the system status, the cluster status. Any data can be useful if you link it together. If you start filtering for value, if you are starting asking another questions, because every time you're gonna see an answer, another question will bob out, or you, you can have an, a, a, another question from your manager that you need to mine the data again and again. So you're gonna iter iterate and repeat until you reach to a conclusion. Uh, one summary that I'll, I think about uh, just like uh, this solution or this approach will help you during benchmark, will help you during like choosing a new technology, uh, uh, tuning a different parameters. You see like in every file system there is a thousand, like hundreds and hundreds of, of parameters that we don't know if we turn it on or turn it off or change the number, how our application will be affected. So by, by, by having this approach, we can understand each, each little thing we do in the bottom up, we can see its effect on the application layer. Uh, finally, uh, make sure you check uh, DDN grid scaler. It's, uh, it can pretty much do everything. 
Uh, it's all-in-one storage for uh, OpenStack. So basically, we have all the four drivers, Manila, Cinder, Object, and the Glance. And it can do Hadoop as well. Uh, uh, it's a high-performance storage. Uh, uh, thanks to my colleague, Maria, this, is, this work uh, wasn't possible without her. Also, the team at University of Birmingham, Simon and uh, Ritzlow. Uh, it was really a joint effort on, on, on uh, the whole benchmark. Any questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs>